So, carpet racing. What do you change through the day? Your car's feeling slightly strange in practice. You want to change the feel of the car. What is there to change through the day at a carpet race? And what are the best things to change? So, I'm going to start straight off with number one of things that we kind of change through the day. And that is the bolstered heights at the front and the rear. So, these control the angle of the camber links and control the roll centers and also the the camber change of the tires. So starting with the front, if you take spacers out of the front link, this is gonna stiffen the front end up slightly, but also give you more camber change and usually give you more aggressive steering, more pointy steering through the corners, and it's really just gonna liven up the car. So you can raise and lower that inner bolstered at the front to either add aggression or remove aggression from the front end. Now the rear is quite a similar story. So if you add spacers under the rear link, the car's gonna stay rolled down more at the back. It's not gonna stand up. So it probably won't turn as much initially into the corner with extra spacers. However, you normally gain on power steering coming out of the corners due to the way that you get slightly less camber change when you add spacers under there which allows the tyres to roll over more as the car rolls and that allows you to have more on power steering out of the corners. Okay, so the second part is the diff oil in the rear. Now, this is a good change to balance your car the whole way through the corner from coming in on the brakes to exiting on the power. So, the thing with the diff is we find when we run thicker oil, we find you lose a little bit of off power steering because the wheels don't really want to allow the car to turn as easily. However, when you get on the power, you have more steering on the power with a thicker diff. And that's because you're sending more drive to the outside wheel, which allows the car to steer out of the corners. It, it, it turns the car, that outside wheel, having the extra drive. So pretty much, if you feel like your car's aggressive into the corner and then drives very straight out of the corner, you can probably get away with a thicker diff. However, if there's a really tight section of the track, you know, you've you've got to turn a long way around. You've got like three hairpins in a row or something, and you're really just struggling to get that rotation initially out of the car, then dropping the diff oil is probably going to help you on the day. Okay, so thing three that we change on a race day on carpet is we change the front hub height. Now, we really use this to control how much steering we have and how the car moves in the corners. So if you lower the front hub down, you're lowering the front roll center just on its own pretty much. So what this does is it allows the car to sort of dive more over the front in the corners and really pivot in the middle of the corner. So you sort of use this if you've got a lot of hairpins and your car kind of feels like the, the weight is staying at the back and just pushing in the corners. If you lower the front hub, it allows the car to really get over the front and just pivot in the middle of the corners and you can drive out the other side. Now the opposite is the case if you've got sort of a lot of sweepers in a track or it's really high grip and you find every time you turn the wheel your car's sort of just diving at the front, it's just really rolling downwards at the front and you want it to stay a bit more upright and uh, the car just stay more weight at the back sort of through the corners then you can raise those front hubs and it's going to really sort of stabilise your car through the corners uh, it's going to make it sort of easier to drive with a little bit less steering. So it is a good thing to change. You have got to remember, as I've said before, if you lower the hub one mil, you've got to add one mil underneath the bump steer under the bolstered on the outside. So just remember that. And yeah, obviously the same if you raise it up, you want to remove a spacer. So that's pretty much that for the front hubs. It's a good change to make to alter the amount of steering you have. Okay, so another one to tune on race day is the ride height. Now, normally we try and run the ride height pretty much as low as we can get away with, which we find is about 13 on the two wheel drive before something strange starts to happen with how the car sort of works around the corners. The reason we run it as low as we can is because on carpet, weight transfer is the enemy and you want to remove as much weight transfer from the car as you can. So lowering it down achieves that. Now, the reason that you would have to raise it, however, is if you've got some sort of feature or something and the, if the car just seems to sort of twist and like book off a feature in a, a weird way that you're not used to, then often this is because 
it's too low and the chassis is you know scrubbing the ground off the feature and um causing it to sort of fly strange in the air so generally we run it as low as we can which will be about 14 13 something like that and if we have to raise it due to a feature or something that we're struggling with then we'll raise it up so that's the general rule of thumb e even if the grip is fairly low on carpet we find it's still better to run it low because usually that on power steering on carpet is still an issue to deal with because you have so much drive from the rear and the lower you can keep the car and reduce that weight transfer the less of an issue that's going to be so got to keep it as low as you can and then tune it to the features of how much ride height you need to have i'd never really go above 15 i'd never really go above 15 on carpet so between 13 and 15 is about where we like to keep it so another thing we've been playing with recently on carpet is the rear camber now we normally leave the front camber at about two degrees we don't seem to play with that and we leave that where it is on carpet the rear camber though we have started to play with recently so we have found that when you increase the rear camber we seem to gain side bite and then also have an increase in the on power steering out of the corner so it's, it's a thing that we change pretty much depending on the layout. If you sort of get there in the morning and the whole track's hairpins, then you probably don't want much camber because you're going to want your car to rotate through the corner and then bolt straight out of that corner to the next one. Whereas if the layout's very swoopy and sweepy and you just want the, you know, the side traction and the stability from the rear end, but then you also want to be able to steer in a curve on power as well, it can be better to increase the rear camber so that you know you've got more side bite and then a little bit more on power steering as well to allow you to keep that curve going coming out so that's something we've been playing with recently and it is one that you can easily try so if you're just somewhere practicing something like that then you can quickly just give it a tune and see what you think of it on the day so yeah have a go with it and see what you think okay so the next one is the weight in the car now usually we run no weight under the battery, we do have weight in the front just to keep the front down like the steel bulkhead and all the electrics weights, but the actual weight under the battery itself, so just adding weight to the car, what that usually does is just it kind of dulls the car down and just makes the grip feel more consistent between on and off power, on steering, everything. It just makes the car feel super consistent and quite dull to drive. Now the downside to this is obviously you're going to lose lap time from adding weight to the car. It's just the way it is but if it all just feels like it's too much and it's happening too quickly and you're just crashing a lot then maybe adding 40 grams or so under your battery isn't going to be a bad move. If it, if it stops you from crashing half the time but you're 0.1 a lap slower then it's going to be worth it in the end. Okay so the power is something that you can also change through the day it's very much dependent on the layout so obviously normally some tracks have got a full straight or even like two straights and then other tracks will not have any straight at all so the main things that we change is the boost and the turbo so the turbo pretty much just controls how fast your car is at full throttle on the straight and then the boost can give you like an, an extra bit of feeling of power through the infield as well if, if you need it so I think the thing with the power is again you pretty much run as much as you're comfortable with and you can get away with so if you're having a day where again you're just struggling you can't put your finger on it you know it's just not coming together it's always a good idea just to turn probably the boost down first and just you know calm your car down that little bit and make it easier to drive because less power is always easier to drive but it's not quite as fast so that's why you pretty much run as much power as you're comfortable with because that is the fastest way but then also you don't want to be crashing as well. So yeah it's just getting this right for the layout because and obviously the grip level as well if it's slightly lower grip track compared to a different one you've been at then you're probably going to want to turn it down a little bit as well. So yeah pretty much just track conditions how comfortable you are with the track different factors like that is going to influence how you have the speedo settings set through the day to control how much power you have okay so that's a good list of changes that you can make during a day's racing on carpet 
Now, obviously there's a lot more changes that you could make, but these are just the ones that me and Tommy find that we change the most through the day. So hopefully if you like the video, then give it a like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.